come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Seriously. Thank, Thank you for you. listening. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you know what else you could do, uh, which we would be eternally grateful for, is if you go on over to wherever you found us and give us a like or a star rating or write a review because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded <laughs> listeners like yourself. And we want to keep adding to the Freak Show family sure in our do. quest for world domination when we're just going to be coming out of every speaker, every, kind of like the lawnmower man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, Telephones just like will that. ring everywhere and exactly we will answer like and go, hello, it is the dawn of the Saturday Night Freak Show. I wow, have not like seen it. Lawnmower Man in a long time. I okay. mean, I was not prepared you're, for you're that. You're doing fine. But you're yeah. on board with this. <laughs> yeah, I was not prepared I mean, for I, where we were going it kind of in this feels, intro. It kind of feels like you're putting a lot of responsibility on us, Colin. And I don't know how oh, I feel oh, about I, that. I, Maybe. I, and it's more so the people listening. That's but right. Because if they don't do it, then we don't get yeah. there. We don't right. ring your phones. And but we, we want would, you to be our... we would be in charge of the world domination part. And that sounds like a lot to me. That's yeah, fine. I'm all for that. Uh, you know, yeah. whatever podcast rulers. Uh, so, a lot of power. <laughs> so will it be just like podcasters ruling the world or um, just us in general? We won't know or? until they So we're like the voice overlords? Yeah, I think so. Like mm-hmm. the great Listen powerful Oz or something? dulcet tones of Saturday Night Freak Show superstars, starting with... Michaela. Sean. Holly. <laughs> Creeped out Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Colin. And so what we do, we... Uh, Colin's practicing his uh, midnight to 5 a.m. radio like voice. Going on. Like, well, like because I noticed I'm, yeah. I'm kind of sick, so I can, oh, I can so actually... So you're just ha- leaning into it? Yeah, so this is like, smooth jazz, Colin. <laughs> I can go with a lower register now that I don't usually have. Um, yeah. Do you want sexy music? <laughs> well, I want to tell you <laughs> something, listeners. Colin. So what we're doing all through this month, we're preparing you. We're taking uh, your request, because in the month of January 2018, 19, we're going to do 2019. 2019, 2019 sorry, yeah. <laughs> we're going to do. We're going to be doing that uh, for a while. Thank yeah. you for the yeah. <laughs> thanks for the the, the fix there. We mm-hmm. are going to watch movies that are chosen by you, you dear listeners. listeners, dear readers, dear brailers. So you got another week, I think, to uh, put in your suggestions. You can hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show, or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Bye. Email Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We'll add them to the list. Then we're going to put them up for you to vote on them, pair them down. We're going to go with the top four, whatever you decide. We're going to watch in January. So you have all the power. That's right. It's a scary scary scary. Also, your fault. Yeah. That's right. (laughs) You cannot blame us. I don't want to hear any bullshit in the mailbag Mm -hmm. about the movies we pick or what we say about them. This is your fault. Mm -hmm. Uh So we have really on you. No uh, one to blame but yourself. Nope. I feel like some of our our past uh, mistakes are going to come back to haunt us. People are out giving out for vengeance. They think I want to hurt us back for the ways we've hurt them. (laughs) Probably. Will we let them? Yeah. It's It's all under our control. It's going to be a fantastic experiment, (laughs) which we've actually done. This will be the second year in a row that we did it. And it was a blasty blast the first time. Yeah. We're hoping to recreate that magic and catch lightning in a bottle again. For the love of God, no raw head wrecks. Uh, so tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Holly, what movie did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched Sidekicks from the year 1992 and directed by <laughs> a dude, Aaron Norris. Ah. Who the f- Aaron Norris? Aaron it's, Norris. Uh, <laughs> surprising because I believe there's a fellow by the name of Chuck <gasps> there, in the movie. There he is. There was also an Eric Norris. I don't know if you caught that. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Is this, is, is this a classic Hollywood nepotism situation going on in this movie? Is it I mean, Norris Cousins and what kind of Gar- Is it a Wahlberg situation Aaron, here? Aaron Norris is Chuck Norris's youngest brother. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. So, All right. so yes. Maybe a little a bit. Maybe a little bit. Eric Norris had a brief cameo in this. Might be Chuck Norris's son. It's fine. Yep. You know, Wall now works. that you're saying, like, there's a movie that I remember. I worked at a video store sure. in the early 90s, and I remember there being a movie that had, like, all of the, uh, like, action hero siblings. Yeah. Like, Frank Stallone. Yeah. Uh, what, what's Don Swayze? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don oh Swayze. wow. Yeah. There's, like, two more, but I can't remember who that, because I'm assuming Aaron one Norris? of them might have been Aaron. Well, but he's a director, though. Yep. 
So I don't know he if did, that would have been uh, He did some stunt work and stuff, too. So yeah. he, he has done, is, like, acting. Is karate well, a acting. family thing with these guys? Oh, yeah. It's a way of life. Yeah. Uh, true guess. or false, uh, Chuck Norris studied under the great Bruce Lee. Mm. No idea. Yes. Okay. True or false, Chuck Norris once killed 50,000 men. True. And then he started shooting. Oh, we're going to do, do this, this again, the whole huh? time. We're going to do this again, huh? <laughs> Shit, I forgot about this. We're watching a Chuck Norris movie. This opens the door for Colin. Like, fucking Chuck Norris. God damn it. I forgot about this. <laughs> In, like, our Delta Shit. Force episode, we've all, except for Colin, the rest of us are realized we're pretty much illiterate when it comes to anything Chuck Norris. Like, yeah. we have no literacy. In we this. also realize I, yeah. in that podcast there's a reason we're yeah. all mm-hmm. illiterate to mm. Chuck Norris movies. Yeah. yeah. They're bad. Well, yeah. you didn't like Delta Force, one of the great action because classics of the 1980s. Movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's no, primarily... it was a great 10 minutes. Yeah. But those yes, 10 exactly. minutes are great. Yeah, no, yeah. great 10 minutes. I yeah. will give you that. You just have to sit through a whole plane like hijacking three, plot like line three first. hours yeah. to get to that 10 minutes. That's we fine. That's find fine. Out, a lot of like, defenestration. And then yeah. 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 What the listeners think is like the Chuck Norris movies that we should watch. I'm curious, is it Missing in Action? Invasion is USA. Invasion USA. Yeah. That seems to be the one that's like, like, that's not a good movie either. No. But it is rising through the, like, as recognizable Chuck Norris movies. It's mm-hmm. like the Cobra of yeah. his oeuvre. That's the one oh. where they destroy the whole mall, right? The yeah. mall that was condemned that they could just, yeah. like, have free reign of, so they actually destroyed it. Yeah. yeah. See, that sounds great. It's not, though. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not. Exact, that's every Chuck Norris but movie. It sounds great, right? All right, but my basis of comparison is fucking Delta Force, and so anything's But that's be considered, that. like, one of his best ones by most people. Oh, exactly. You people. Yeah. <laughs> you people. Uh, Delta, Force. Delta Force is always like the first one that comes up. Delta it's Force. like the one that, yeah, because Delta, I think it's like, that, that's it, right? It's mm-hmm. like missing in action, top of the line. Yeah. Right? Chuck Norris missing in action. Mm-hmm. And then it's like Invasion USA or Delta Force. Like those seem yeah. to be like the three. And then you go to Walker, Texas. Right? And, sure, then, yeah. and then Wade on this is like what Firewalker, that like Indiana I Jones knockoff he had. Nobody knows yeah. that one, yeah. but we should watch that one. I'm curious about this one you mentioned during this movie, The Hitman. Is that oh, what yeah. you said? Came yeah. out the year before this. And it, it he looks just like that in that movie. Yeah, yeah. he's got he's the long hair, black, and the trench, black coat. trench coat, yeah. the sawed off shotgun. Hitman. Yeah, but it, I'm I, in for that one. Is it the, post, the poster was on his wall in this movie. Uh, yeah, right after he had yeah. the dream, it was like the Hitman. Was yeah, uh, so I'm like that had to be a, an Aaron Norris movie. I don't know, but um, I think it was. Probably. Yeah, uh, yeah it was he, like a mafia hitman or something like that. Mm-hmm. That was like before he did uh, Hellbound, where he fought. Was it the devil? It was some kind of satanic. That sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, it wasn't. There was the yeah. it. was the hero in the terror. <laughs> Again, we're back attention? to the sounds great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. not great. Yeah. Well, There's this was toward here. the There's end of uh, of Chuck Norris's like theatrical run mm-hmm. because I don't think movies like Forest Warrior like made it. To- <laughs> oh, that one, that's that's the one we, <laughs> we should watch. About this show. Anyway, Forest Warriors. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna say it's awesome, but it it has cool ideas at work at least. Is in like the yes. fringed, uh, yes. like, yeah, that's right. yes. I can't remember the fucking ghillie suit and yes. shit. Yeah, yeah, because Steven Seagal did what was it on Deadly Ground? On Deadly no, Ground, on Deadly Ground. There, no, yeah, the, some, there was something else where he was like the way of the peaceful warrior. That something warrior. Damn it, peaceful warrior. That sounds awesome. like yeah. I don't know. Okay, um, so <laughs> so this movie, so this movie filmed at Sidekicks. the peak of Chuck Norris's. Popularity, maybe the peak of Jonathan Brandis's popularity. Who's Jonathan yeah. Brandis? Oh, oh, may he rest. May he rest. You'd know him if you saw him. Uh, he he's was, well. He's, he's been, in, he's in been on the Freak Show before with uh, the TV. It. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He was the uh, Deep Quest DSRV Sequest. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg. Sequest. Right. Yeah. yeah. With him and Roy mm-hmm. Scheider, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh, and then yeah. uh, Never Ending Story. Uh, Never Ending Story. Right. Two. Never Ending and, uh, oh, I don't think I saw that. Really. No. I watched that one a lot when I was a kid. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure I saw Never Ending Story like once. Mm-hmm. That's really all you need. No, I mean, it's a classic ah, children's. Sure, okay, sure. so, um, and yeah. Lady, and then and Ladybugs. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. Ladybugs. That was the Rodney Dangerfield movie. That was. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's the one. That's my Jonathan Brandis. That's so, <laughs> that at one fucking point, movie. Well, Jonathan Brandis, he's a suicide case. Yes. Yes. Was? yes. 2003, I believe it yes. was, he mm-hmm. killed himself. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. After a. Long bout of depression. Mm, yeah. Probably from looking back. And I mean, okay. No, so, yeah, uh, I was I was reading up on. Yeah. And like, yeah, no, it was because his career was like tanking really, really, really hard. Yeah. But the fucked up thing was that I didn't know is that like 
he didn't hang himself in his apartment. It was the hallway. It was to the, the building. It was the hallway in his Ooh. apartment building. And I was like, oh, what poor person. Like, yeah. probably some custodian that doesn't get paid enough had to, like, find him. You know? Yeah. Like, that's horrible. Like, that's, that's fucked up. It was way darker than I, like, I knew he'd committed suicide and mm-hmm. had, like, a, had, like, a lot of problems, but I didn't yeah. know it was that dark until I looked into it. I was like, wow. How old was he? 27. 27. Oh, okay. 20, 27 of club. He's 27. Yeah. Of the he's curse. 27. The curse of 27. For some reason, I keep getting him I transposed with, uh, it was Brad Renfro. Mm-hmm. But he was an overdose case. He right? was yeah. an overdose case. Okay. That seems like the so fucking morbid conversation. <laughs> that seems like the better way to go than hanging. Ugh. I mean, yeah, I know. Just kind of fucked up either way. It's, mm-hmm. it's all fucked up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so good. back to karate. Yeah. I know, which is like <laughs> running at arts with this like upbeat, wholesome movie <laughs> yeah. called Sidekicks, executive produced by Chuck Norris. Yeah, the man <laughs> who can do no wrong. You know, with this close to putting Richard Mole on the wall. We're this close. By what one more movie. Yeah. One more movie. He was uh, in Metal Storm. He was in Metal oh, Storm. He was in Metal Storm. Storm. The destruction Fucking of Jared hell. Sin. As Hurok, the Cyclopean warrior. Yes. I feel like he was in something else we watched. Maybe. I feel like he had to have been. I'm sure there's lots of people that are on the wall that we have not kept yeah, track oh, of. I'm sure. So. I'm sure the wall <laughs> and they're all spaces. listening. They're like, those sons of bitches. Recognize me. Yeah. Yeah. Witness me. Yeah. Witness me. <laughs> So Chuck Norris executive produces this movie. I say yeah. that only because, um, you know, uh, wearing a rubber against Chuck Norris is like it's no waste of time because there is no protection against Chuck Norris. Okay, well, I got to stop this. Whoa, uh, uh, yeah, just went. In a that was direction. just like, like out of nowhere. I was just gonna let it go though. I was gonna let it go yeah. and see where it went. Yeah, I, I was curious about no, that one. Because, no, you can't let that go because when you say when you're wearing a rubber against Chuck Norris, like I have questions. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's the other way around. A rubber. Do- yeah, okay. Uh, so. Woo. It's a if wholesome film. If you can't film. get it right, don't do it. <laughs> I'm, I can't get any of them right. Although, I, have them I don't know, maybe it's going to be great out. that you just that yeah, was like, up Chuck Norris The last time I had a sheet, and this time I'm trying to wing it by yeah, mind. Yeah, no, I, I I still want to hear it, even if it's fucked up. Okay. I feel like that, that makes, makes it better. better. Even, yeah. that makes it better. <laughs> even if you put the punchline in front, right. yeah, I yeah. want to hear it. Yeah. going to happen, yeah. which is great. Uh, but you can tell when it's coming because he starts talking really fast because he wants to get it out before we interrupt him. Because <laughs> right. I'll just be like, no! <laughs> no. I know before. that's coming. That's why I no. know the finger. No! <laughs> um, so clearly this movie, you know... Yeah. You ever seen that movie Karate Kid? No. I don't know what you're talking about. That's a what? really fucking good movie. It is a good movie. When's the last time you've seen it? Karate Kid? Yeah. Recently. Uh, probably like within the year. Wait, you were not talking about the uh, Jaden Smith one? Oh, no. God, no. no. I think okay. I've watched them all within the past three months. Yeah. Re- and yeah? A lot. Oh, that's I have right. a kid. Yeah. And oh, your kid's yeah. in karate. Kid's in karate. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes so sense. he's been watching a lot of Karate Kid. That's sure. a really good movie. There's worse things he could be watching on repeat. Yeah. You, you know, know what's a not a good movie? Karate Kid Part 2. That's a horror movie. I'm sorry. Movie. What? Karate Kid Part 2 where they go to Vietnam. I love Karate Kid Part 2. It's a horrible movie. I was going to say, I feel like it's the, Okanawa, the only one I didn't like very much. Right, Isn't they it? go to Okinawa. They yeah, go to sorry. Japan, yeah. In Japan. It's a horrible movie. Part 1's good. Part 3's good. The next Karate Kid's no. good. Part 3's good. Uh, out it. It's no. 1 and 2. Part, part, and then no, they go to shit three, after that. No. Yeah, yeah, three no. silver. Yeah, one and two. No, not two three. is horrible. Not three. No, three is two bad. is three horrible. Is really okay, well, so horrible. will you? Okay, well then we'll have to ask later if you're showing your uh, son yeah. kicks okay. because this is a karate pro I'm karate show, I'm movie. Show him this shit. Uh, find it. Is this easily readily available, Holly? Um, well, what did we have it, to do? What did you have to do to get this movie? Um, well, this movie comes to us from Australia. <laughs> Some poor Australian <laughs> had to sit down with a VHS and and transfer this. Uh, yeah, apparently. Actually, they <laughs> when I got it, the the wrong movie was in there. It was a fucking Chevy Chase movie, oh, wow. and I had to email them. I like, like a shitty one, dude. It was not like even a really a good shitty one. one. I wish I could remember what it was. It yeah. was so ridiculous. You sent me a picture when you I got did. it. And you were like, "What?" The, it was like the, the Sidekicks DVD case open with that DVD. And you're like, yeah. "What the fuck is this?" I know you had to send it back to get. <laughs> yeah. another? No, no, I didn't have to send it back. They just sent me the right oh, one. Okay. Yeah, they were really so nice now you're it. you're you're up a Chevy Chase movie. Oh no, I threw that shit away. Oh, I want to know. It was, it was, wasn't, it was something it wasn't that I'd Fletch. never heard of. No, no, it, no, no. it was something I had like never heard of. I was like, what the fuck is this? Is this? Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Why don't you still have that? I bet I, I just looked at IMDb it, and it would ring a bell. But find, Yeah, please find it because I really want to know what Chevy Chase movie this <laughs> you that you had never <laughs> what heard of. What was it? I don't remember. It was really. <sighs> but the very nice. Didn't you try watching it too? And you were like, this is awful. No. I thought you tried watching it. No. You gave this movie no chance. No, no chance. It's horrible. 
Very well, uh, I mean, I say that this is a pro karate movie only because, like, uh, it's uh, you spend a lot of time watching a kid train, you, uh, you know, to be a karate what am I going person. For? Karate person. Yep. That's, that's a nice way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Karate expert. Black nope, belt. Nope, 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 no. Nope, 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 Just, nope, nope, a, nope. Karate Just a karate person. person. We're okay. not going for levels here or anything. Just yeah, a no. person who knows karate. I like the way that this kid, uh, you know, he, well, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but he, he exercises. Basically, it's like, here mm-hmm. are the exercises that you have to do. Here are the wise uh, sayings that you have to uh, absorb. Sure. The first one being that life is confusing. That's lesson number one. Yeah. Right. Um, and then suddenly he knows how to throw punches and uh, kick people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was a little more training involved. We watched, Wasn't there? We watched a lot of training. Uh, you know, but it was all exercise. It was like Not doing push-ups it. and sit-ups and push-ups and sit-ups. It was gym class. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, Except outdoors was, in picturesque locations where there were waterfalls and from stuff. From like the it. longest time, there was uh, uh, daydreams. Yeah. Which they refuse to label as daydreams oh, in this movie. I'm going like, to show my hand real quick here and say this movie has no plot. This movie is sure. This movie is two well, thirds what, daydreams. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like it's like three fourths daydreams. Yeah. yeah, like that. That's and then they start doing like getting into the major training montages. Yeah, this is like one like within the that first late ones. third act. Right, late yeah. third yeah. act. Oh yeah, way past gonna, where we should be getting this because it's take, all daydreams yeah. before that. Absolutely, I'm gonna take you one further. Are they daydreams or hallucinations? I, know, I was like, this kid is schizophrenic. We, we get into the point where the, 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 teachers, know. the teacher's in the room and yes. he's looking at the karate dude still. Yes. Yes. That's a hallucination. Thank you. But That's where I was just like, oh, this kid's hallucinating. fucked up. Yes. This kid's got but problems. This movie, this movie, like half the time they tell you he's got mental disabilities, even though you see really no they evidence label him of as that. Slow they say a he's times. slow yeah. a couple several times, yeah. Yes. And then they say that he's got mental problems, and then they treat asthma like it's Asperger's, basically. Like yeah, it's- he has asthma, and that means he's incapable of doing anything. Right. He is. It's like, I, I feel like they're, I mean, they, they say asthma a lot, but I feel like they're relating like the daydreaming part to that, but they're Which not yeah. communicating it well. Yeah, but it makes, that but makes it still no makes sense. no sense. Yeah. Like, he's daydreaming, but I, I still, yeah. I still think he's hallucinating. Well, Isn't he yeah, kind of he old to be daydreaming on this scale? Well, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that's why we're saying it's a mental. He is a like this kid is showing signs. They're ignoring of psychosis. The mental illness. Is yeah. what they're doing. It's yes. a, well, not psychosis. It's a well schizophrenia. Right. He cannot mm-hmm. distinguish sure. his dreams from reality. Yeah. He's yeah. in yes. the classroom and he dreams about Chuck Norris. He's sitting in a hallway and he dreams about Chuck Norris. He's anywhere and he dreams about mm-hmm. Chuck Norris to the point where, as Holly pointed out, at some point. Chuck Norris is still there when someone wakes him up from his daydream. Yes. Yes. And yes. He looks sure. over and Chuck Norris is still looking at him and he looks back at the person he's yeah, talking it's to. Like, where they cross the it's, line. It's yeah. like yeah. fucking night terrors when someone is having a nightmare and they can't tell when they wake up, it's mm-hmm. still there. Mm-hmm. Like that's what this is. Yeah. yeah. It's and the same thing. They were doing all right until they got to that point. Yeah. And they're just like, oh shit, there's something wrong with this kid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This is not good. Yes. But the movie doesn't present it this way. This no. is us as older people no, watching because yeah. the target audience for this i mean the kid's like 15 he's not driving so he's not 16 so he's at least 15 years old or maximum 15, 15 yeah. but the audience i say is like eight it has to be yeah it gotta has be. to be it's like, the only this, way this is, is, this is for anybody. you make this movie for an eight-year-old so they can be prepared for high school you know like mm-hmm. the next day or like this prepares you for to them i mean you know the next stage of oh, growing yeah. up mm-hmm. Right? It's yes. not for no. the kids who are 15. No, no not at all. Not at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> not at all. No. Yeah. Perfectly situated for my kid. Because all of these eight-year-old kids love Chuck Norris. They've seen Missing in Action, and they've seen movies like Hellbound and The Hitman. Yup. <laughs> An Invasion USA. <laughs> the beers in no. Uh, They've watched their parents watch Walker, Texas Ranger. A bunch, that wasn't sure. out yet, was it? It wasn't? I don't what year think did so. that I think- start? I believe Walker 96. started after a Chuck Norris's movie career, kind of theatrical movie career, hit the skids. I'll get but I think it's after this. All right, we're, Feels we're like Captain Google is on the uh-huh. case. 1993. God damn it. That was the same year? The year after it, it premiered, 92. so they were probably yeah, shooting I, it at this time. Shit. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's, a, it's officially 92, but I think the actual theatrical release was 93. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So this film is about Jonathan Brandis as a touched young man. Sorry, he's uh, touched slow. Yeah, as he's <laughs> described in the script. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Wow. 
And he goes to school and spends most of his time, as we said, daydreaming about Chuck Norris. I was actually trying to figure out and in the in the basically he's seeing himself in scenarios from that would be wouldn't be out of place in a Chuck Norris movie. Right. right. I think I think most of them are based on an actual Chuck Norris. Not entirely, but that's what but what I don't understand is like this movie is so heavily marketed with like the karate mm-hmm. angle. But yet he just daydreams of doing literally anything with Chuck Norris. Yeah. It doesn't have to right. be karate. War movies. Yeah. He does the hitman. He does. Hit missing in action, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He does an old Western. And yeah. A Western. Yeah. The karate shows up in the beginning. Yeah. That's the first scene. There's yeah. karate and shit. And then after that, it takes a while before we get back to karate and Chuck Norris. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was this Chuck Norris's uh, last action hero? Kind Did that of. Out yet? 93 oh. was Last Action Hero. Okay, so, so this right a whole meta time. thing yeah. of like, you yeah. know, Freddy Krueger making that jump in it. No, that was later. That was like 97. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Right. Um, but one thing leads to another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, get Freddy like, Kruger, you can play you yourself in a movie. Yeah. Because yeah. right. yeah. uh, Chuck Norris plays in this movie a character called Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Yeah, he is just Chuck Norris. Yeah, sure. In all of these situations the where he uh, brings young Jonathan Brandis along with him. On ass kicking missions, and the kid gets to save popping out of water, shooting people. Yeah, well, I think that's a scene from Missing an Action. It is, yeah, right? yeah. yeah, shooting Joe Piscopo. Yeah. Joe Piscopo's in this movie, by the way. Joe Piscopo <laughs> is in this movie. He is. He is this movie. <laughs> is he? For some people. Yeah, ah, he might as well be. Yeah, he does. He's doing more work than anybody else. He's in this doing movie. the most. You know, he's doing the most. Doing the most. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> He's the hardest working man for, in this for, movie. For better or worse, he's doing the right. most. You yeah. like it, but he's well, doing yeah. it. He's, is he's like, fucking animated in this. Brandis is an extremely, it feels to me, self-conscious actor. He's one of those guys that, like, I know I'm acting, so I'm doing all this stuff because I'm acting. Chuck Norris is like a it. blank slate. Yes. Like, I mean, getting that guy... From now until forever. They might, as well, yeah. they might as well be holding up a headshot of Chuck Norris in half these scenes <laughs> for how much he emotes. Yeah, yeah, they might as well. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, like, I know that some of the criticisms leveled against him is the same kind of criticisms leveled against Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger in their early movies. Like, they don't talk a whole lot because mm-hmm. they Sylvester knew Stallone they weren't... the eyes. He's got the something. Cow eyes. Yeah. <laughs> He's got something. He's, there's, there's something behind those eyes, you know? Right. He's got that well, je ne sais quoi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pronounce it. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, they're basically like, these are action guys, and that's what we're here for, and that's what we're paying them for, and they do action stuff, and like, who cares yeah. what they say? But in this movie, I was like, man, Chuck Norris really doesn't have a whole lot to say in this, even, when he's no. playing he must, himself. He's got to have, like, what, like, 15 lines max in this whole movie? Yeah. Like, but, so. th- but all those come in, like, the very end of the movie. Like, I, I swear he doesn't about, say anything yeah. for, like, the first half of this movie. Yeah. I was trying, so, I mean, if if a movie is basically full of, like, you know, people writing, you know, a writer sitting down and going, you know, it would be cool, is if we made a movie for kids that had, like, a sample, it's like the sampler platter, the Chuck Norris sampler platter, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Or, the variety pack. Oh, my Chuck God, Norris. Chuck Norris sampler <laughs> platter, I love it. <laughs> right? I love it. Yeah. That first one was pretty cool because there's a bunch of ninjas. And yeah. Like some yeah, crazy- Colin loved that first oh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is great so far. <laughs> yeah. It's a good opening. Yeah. <laughs> then it uh, then it you know crashed down, down into reality like down. right after that. Sure. Like, oh now I gotta hang out with this. Oh, kid. Oh, that was a kid. Uh, <laughs> yeah. like um, but okay, so it's the sampler platter, and you've yeah. got all these Chuck Norris scenes, mm-hmm. but somehow you have to as a as a writer, you gotta figure out like how do they relate to what's going on with this kid? Like what do these scenes like reveal? About this kid, how does it drive the narrative forward? Mm-hmm. I would I say am- the answer is it doesn't count. <laughs> is that true? Uh, I would, yeah, yeah, I would yes. say so. Because that's think the that, impression yeah. I got, right? Because there's it. no, I don't think there's any relation between the uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna call them hallucinations, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. that yeah. he has with him involving Chuck Norris and the how they relate to what's going on in real life. Yep. I don't think there is. They're just like no. thrown they're in just, there. Right. They're just yeah. like scenes. Like he l- enjoys being, this, as he says, a sidekick to Chuck Norris. Uh, basically, he's inserting himself into like Chuck Norris movies. And yeah. there's no yeah. greater theme outside of mm-hmm. that. But yeah. that, that like, it consumes his life, though. Yeah. That, like, that is, like, it, it is it is problematic for him how yeah. much of his life that takes up. Yeah. 
And like, it's not like, that's why like these characters calling it daydreams is like, makes it sound so much more innocuous than what it actually right. is. Yeah. It's <laughs> psychotic episode. Yeah. Yeah. It is. When yeah. he's walking out from school and like dives into that ditch for no fucking reason because of his hallucination. Like that was, I was like, wow, this kid is... No wonder why he's getting beat up in the locker room. Could you imagine going to school with this kid? Like, Now, I never did that because it, I thought it was real. But as a kid, I, know, I had a lot of flashbacks watching this movie tonight. Because it has been 20 years since I've seen this movie. Sure. And watching it tonight, I realized I watched this movie a lot when I was young. Me too. A lot. <laughs> Loved this movie way back when. Yeah. And I, I was just like, I did that as a kid. Like I, you know, it was just, it was. Yeah, the but how old part. were you? Well, well not no, fifteen young. or sixteen. No, young. No, yeah. Young. See, he's too old to be behaving this way. Yes, yes. I agree. Yeah. But I, I related to what he was doing, despite his age. I didn't care about that. It was. Based yeah, because on you were. Yes, because you were younger. Yeah, that's this, exactly this what Callum's point. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. agree, and I'm, I agree with that. But like, <laughs> I, like I, yes, as an eight year old, okay, yeah. like I understand that. You're but that's what I used to do. All the time. Yeah. Right. But you're in high school and one of your classmates who is 15 or 16 is, is constantly daydreaming at Chuck Norris and diving in fucking ditches and yeah, acting him out. Yeah, we make fun of him yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. you'd beat the shit out of that kid because you'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I was a nerd in high school and I'd make fun of that Yeah, kid. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, he can't keep it. He literally is incapable of yeah. keeping it together. Like, yeah. he cannot. Yeah. Well, I mean... Here's, here, here's, what, here's what we gather from the movie. And his dad does... Expresses at one point. Bo Bridges. He is, Bo Bridges. He, Bo Bridges yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, he's he's using these scenarios as a way of escaping reality because he... he <laughs> that's mental sucks. illness. No, so, no, no, yes. No, I know, but he's he's using these to escape reality because he his reality is too painful. What this kid is suffering from is post-traumatic stress disorder because his mother died and he's never dealt with it. Ten years earlier. That did is they, what did they happening. say that his mom died? Yes. Okay, I missed yes. that. Yes. I was like, where the that fuck is That is what's happening. Mom? They, they don't here, They don't express that very well in this, the problem but that is, is what's happening. That is, there's the scenarios that he dreams about have nothing to do with that. I mean, like I thought, maybe he had a crush on his teacher. Right, which is because Julie why is she from, in it all uh, the time versus... Right, instead yeah. of his mom or, or instead of the his, girl. His girl. The, uh, uh, Danica McKellar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah, like, like yeah. Winfred. Uh, Danica like, McKellar. Yeah, why is she not Lauren? in it? I think which Lauren? is the question I was yeah. asking. Lauren. Yeah, th- most I, of the time. I felt their relationship to be extremely shoehorned because he seems pretty asexual as a character. I felt like I, I felt th- like yeah, he has no interest in anything other than Chuck Norris. And like, I and I think a lot of this is because, like I said, yeah, he his <laughs> he when, fr- from when Norris. his mother died, he's never really grown up. Mm-hmm. He's okay. never really dealt with it, and he's he's not matured. So these things that he does, that he's acting like a child, it's because he's really reverted back to that that phase when his mother died. Shit's dark, man. It uh, is dark. It's, it's fucking, really fucking, fucking dark, deep, especially know. like knowing Jonathan Brandis yeah. is like real life. Story. I know it's, it's really, really fucking it's dark. Really depressing. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't think you'd come to a podcast about sidekicks and get this shit? <laughs> did you? No, you didn't. No, you fucking didn't. No, you Sons didn't. Bitches. But it's there, and we're gonna give it to you. Well, he keeps casting people from his life, except yes. his father. His father never shows up in his right. hallucinations because he ha- because he has issues that he's not dealing with with his father. He he's absent in his life, so he's absent from his fantasies. And Chuck Norris is taking Jesus. It. And wow, laying it, laying it <laughs> down. Bring it, Jesus. bring it. Yeah, and Chuck Norris is filling that, exactly. the the father role. Yes, and and he so wanted he's and imagining he, the and he's, he's imagining he's saving <laughs> this this mother figure in his life, his teacher. He's yeah. saving her because he couldn't save his mother. I feel like I need to lay down on a couch right now, I man. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm with you on this. All right, this, right. Okay. no, I'm I'm all with you in this. Yeah, yeah. let me put my feet up real quick. This is, this is uh, why Holly's here. Got some stuff to unpack. And so uh, Joe, I'm not playing. Joe Piscopo also <laughs> shows up in it because, well, Joe Piscopo in the quote unquote real life is yeah. a dojo, a karate instructor. Mm-hmm. His dad, Bo Bridges, thinks he's going to take the kid to, you know, get learn karate uh, so he will, will be able to focus his daydreams, I guess, right. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Because and learn there's this self-discipline stuff that, in karate, so they think he can apply that to his mental state. That's yeah. that's the theory. That's right. the idea. Yeah. And since, you know, Chuck Norris is a role model and will do karate like Chuck yeah. Norris does. Seems they, like a sound idea right. to me. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. And they Focuses meet Joe energy. Piscopo. Absolutely. And Joe Piscopo is like... Uh, the villain. <laughs> is he? Too? He is. Okay, so... How did like, you not get that? He's like Leslie Nielsen and Surf Ninjas. There it is. <laughs> that's, the, that's that's accurate. That's it feels accurate to me. <laughs> that is accurate. That is what this level of this movie is on. <laughs> does he ever stop screaming in this movie? He screams everything. Yeah. 
He does. At one point, he kind of mumbles a few things to himself. He's like, I can break it when he doesn't break the bricks. <laughs> yeah. That sort of thing. Oh, yeah, Otherwise, yeah. no, he's screaming the whole yeah. time. Oh, yeah. It's a performance for the age. There's like one eye bugging out the whole time, I too. I'm yes. sorry, but I fucking love Joe Piscopo. <laughs> 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 I think it's Is he on the wall yet. I think it's yeah. hilarious. Uh, he's only been in two. <laughs> Dead he Heat and be. this. Yeah. Think, Dead right? Heat. I'm going to pick a Joe Piscopo movie next time just Please so do. he can get on the wall. Please. I, he I can't it. get enough. I can't get enough. No, Are there three Joe Piscopo movies? I don't think so. I'm sure that he's either. got probably stuff that he's leading. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, so I, I, I have yeah. a thought about Joe Piscopo's character, though. Sure. Like, yeah. this, so there, I mean, I mean I, I've never been involved in karate in my real life. No, but like, neither have I. Between this character... <laughs> No, between this character in this movie and Rex Kwando and Napoleon Dynamite, <laughs> is this like a reference to some famous like dojo like infomercial owner that just screams and yells obscenities at kids and is I know. really is over this, the top? Is this, is this a, a thing? thing? Is this I'm a thing? Yeah, sure right. Because like, they're, obviously Rex Kwando seems like a callback to this exact same type of character. This like it's so similar. This, Isn't like, it the over... guy from Karate Kid or no? I mean the the guy in that the Martin Cove character. I don't remember. I don't he know. was just it was just the idea that Is like, this an in joke in karate, I guess is what I'm asking. Like, is there some like famous right. infomercial like, dojo that's owner? Something, it may be something yeah. they know this, that like, we don't. It's yeah. like over testosterone fueled white guy. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I know. Oh, no, what I feel is like this? that is a thing. Maybe but, uh, but it's maybe so it's an invention specific. of the movie, but it feels maybe. like it's drawing from something. Yeah. It doesn't it, it, it happens sure frequently. Yeah. yeah. Like Rex Kwando and Napoleon Dynamite felt like a meme I just didn't understand. It felt like a meme, you know? It shows up everywhere. I've been I've watched TV shows. Shows where like the uh, uh, like martial law, like yeah. the 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 guy who trains the cops is a white guy who is like really overzealous about the martial arts. And yeah. it's like and American flag pants. Well, yeah, but, yeah. but it's also yeah. it's also about thinking like you're the best at this and you're like the greatest. And then somebody comes in and it's like you're not really good at this. Mm. I just feel like yeah. every dojo owner I've seen in a movie is like a it's screaming, a raging white yeah, asshole. Like this. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a thing, yeah. and I don't know why it's a thing. I right. agree with we you. Don't where know where the did the start? Where this? did the meme start? Well, like, to, but isn't that it? Always has to be like an antagonist to the main character because right. you know. The main character has to prove himself, mm -hmm. so that guy always has to be quote unquote, you know, challenging him in some way by yeah, right. just being a jerk to his yeah, face. Yeah, right. right. But their behavior is so like it's always over the top specific. and cartoonish. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, especially yes. in this because I, he's never calculating. You I know? thought maybe mm -hmm. it was going to go a different way, having not seen this movie before. Sure. I thought maybe you know that he was uh, Brandis was actually going to end up in this guy's class. Yeah, but because he didn't, that gave them license to make this guy like a cartoonish. Right. Character. But, you know, you're saying it was the villain. I sat there for long stretches of this movie going like, where is this movie headed? Because oh, yeah. Joe Piscopo shows up in the hallucinations, but really does not show up in any of the real life stuff. Right. Which basically is the kid has asthma and suffers all the time. Yeah, there's a bully in school, but even he really didn't. I mean, I guess right. there's the, no the real life counterpart yeah. that's yeah. driving yeah. this. Like, if, yeah. it would make sense if he, if he, if there was a real life bully, and that's why he reverts to the, to the. Uh, well, I'm still going to call them hallucinations sure, you know, yeah, to yeah. deal with them. Yeah, because right. in the hallucination, Chuck Norris helps him, you know, uh, but it's conquer always, something right, that he but it's failed at. Joe Piscopo, in, in life. right? But that's not coming through in real life. Well, it's not like but it had, wasn't because Richard Mall, who's the gym instructor, right. who yells at him, but is you know later revealed to be like you know basically a cheerleader. Once he starts right. performing well, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, he's like, yeah, you go get him, kid. But he, I think, is a villain in one or two of he those is. hallucinations. Yeah, he's like a, he's like, a, a like a Nazi right, type. Yeah, yeah. Right. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, When you're in the Nazi torture dungeon, I mean, I remember yeah, sure. that Chuck Norris movie. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, so we, we all remember that Chuck <laughs> Norris movie, Colin. Um, <laughs> but I agree with you. There's no driving force because uh, we don't. And you said earlier, it's not until like the third act that we get to like the karate part because they don't introduce. The, the challenge of the of of the tournament yeah that takes yeah. a long time to get to because if it was the, the tournament like comes out of nowhere if it, comes, out, yeah. it yeah. comes out of nowhere if it was earlier on in the movie it would make more sense like that's what he's training for yeah. that's what he's going to, but it's way later that's why i said it's karate way kid later. like you yes. know at least they build in the antagonism between right. uh daniel and johnny so mm -hmm. you know it's like they these two are going to fight at some point and then the tournament just gives them like a legal, you know, right. arena right. where they can do yes. it. It's like that's the the structure, right? Yeah. But right. if you do it like this, where it's like, okay, there's a guy who bullies him and kind of picks on him, doesn't really beat him up, 
you know, because they never really get into a fight. Not until the in gym class. And, right. Yeah. Until, yeah. yeah. But fight. at that point, the kid can actually fight back. I mean, he does, he does like knock him down in the locker room. He but, does like assault him. Yeah. Sure. But the kid doesn't fight but, well, well, because no, of the yeah. asthma right. or whatever. Yeah. He's unable to. It's just because there is no relation between what happens in real life and what happens in his hallucinations. Mm -hmm. Like, that's where we get lost in. Like, there's, there right. should be a connection between the two. Yeah. Because this right. event happened in real life. This is why he's having yeah, a hallucination about it. Yeah, because the kid who, like, who does knock him down is never the, like, lead never. villain in one of the. the never. Right. He's in them. He's in them, but, but he's, he's always the, the sidekick to Joe yes. Piscopo mm -hmm. or, or Richard Maul. Yeah. The adult, you know, the authoritarian mm -hmm. adult. Yeah, I totally expected this movie to be like junior blood sport. <laughs> so like I mean that's when, fair. <laughs> when like Can we just watch junior blood sport? Yeah, like baby baby a, blood can, sport. I would, can I watch kids beat the fuck yeah. out of each other? I'd watch that. You you, <laughs> you have to like you have to like earn your place in adult blood sport by going through junior blood sport. Right. You know? Exactly. Like, I yeah, wanna see like kids blood, killing other like kids. Blood sport <laughs> prep school. Yeah, exactly. But like, I wanna see kids with their eyes wide open, <laughs> blinded. <laughs> Little, little, little kid, Sean. Sean. <laughs> Blinded Jesus. children. I see a young Jack Bolo Young. That's what I want. Yeah. I mean, we all want to see that. I, I want to see little kids going, I'm going to fucking kill you. Yeah, I bet That's he what looked, I want. I bet he looked exactly the same as same. a child. I'm sure he did. He uh -huh. had to, right? Yeah. Because I've yeah. seen that kid. I've seen 12 year old <laughs> little dude jacked as fuck. I've seen that child. You want little kid Kumite? Yeah, I, kid, you kid know Kumite. what? I really do. Kumite Jr. Give yeah. me that movie. Yeah. I'm down. We Fuck gotta it. look this up. It's probably out there. Sure, it's got it. Be. If oh. not, we should just remake Bloodsport and cast it with kids. There Same actually was everything. There was. It's in production hell, but there was supposed to be an all female remake of Bloodsport with Ronda Rousey being the lead. And I was like, I'll fucking go watch that. Yeah, movie. I'd watch it sounds too. awesome. I mean, yeah, go for it. No, I mean, but this, kids, is, this is this is when Ronda Rousey was at her peak. That this was, was rumoring. Saying, right. So I like, so I like, like where you're going ago. with it. You yeah. lost me at Ronda Rousey. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't Gina Carano. Yeah, Gina Carano. I'm okay with good. that. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Well, she's yes. obviously got to be like in it. She'd probably be like the Bolo Young. Oh yeah, she would. She would be the Bolo <gasps> Young. I'm so into that. I, I would be all for this. I just yeah. don't want Ronda Rousey to be the hero. But she, I think she's she's past that point in her career at this point. You know, Gina. Yeah. What, that, no, but she's the bad guy. Yeah, no, I want two. her to be the hero. Mm. Nah, she can't be the hero. Yeah, she's got, she's got to be she's, the young. She's not charismatic enough to be. Yeah. And Ronda Rousey is. She's a horrible actress. At the point well, that so this is was Gina being. Carino. I know, yeah. but she's not as intolerable. Like, I, no. <laughs> No. All right. So this is right. Is your <laughs> I don't know that. Yeah. Give us your suggestions for Lady Bloodsport. Guys. Right. Lady Blood Again, Sport. just put them all in there. I mean, I'm down fucking, for Lady Bloodsport. Yeah. Yeah. No, obviously. I'm, yeah. I'm all for it. Lady Bloodsport. Get can them be, all in there. Can it be like Miss Bloodsport? <laughs> well, in any kind of well, maybe yeah. Even in Bloodsport, it happens that you have to send your hero through training uh, to become boy, good we. at their uh, their martial arts. And in this movie. Uh, which I actually the, the scene that got us uh, to this moment. So Mako, Mako, Ma Mako. I think yeah. it's Mako. It's Mako uh, from Conan it's the fine. Barbarian. Sure. And, yeah, he is. Uh, he is the uncle of uh, the kids' Noreen. teacher. Yes. Yep. And there's like there's some scenes missing here. This is where the movie's like edited with a fucking chainsaw. Because I, I will, like, I, will I will confirm that there are some missing scenes from this. Are there? <laughs> It, yes. Like right in there, right? I mean, because like from my copy. <laughs> yes. Oh, are there? From, oh, yeah. <laughs> what are we missing? Because we're, because we're watching it. I'm like, there was a scene right there. I know there was. Yeah. It I remember it. Okay. What are we? I remember are we missing? it, and it's gone. Yeah. All right. So that's what happens when you buy I'm, things on the black. This market. is 101 minutes. What are we missing from this movie? It felt like two I, and a half. It hours. felt really. Much <laughs> it felt <laughs> long. <laughs> well, there had to be a scene that somehow bridged the fact that, like. Uh, you know, because they're talking in the version that we saw, yeah. there was a scene in a restaurant where uh, Bo Bridges is there. And apparently uh, there's a date happening between him and the uh, the teacher. And she's introducing Jonathan Brandis to her uncle. Yeah. The idea that he's going to train him in the mystic arts. Right. We get to mm -hmm. that real quick. You're yeah. Right. Because yeah. there's a scene. There's something missing where she even referenced something that didn't that we didn't see about right. like, yeah, when my uncle cooked the food or brought it out or whatever over dinner. Like what? Um, right. Oh yeah, because he. Oh yeah, he seems to like you very much. I'm like, have they met? Yeah. It's right. Like, did we meet? Because we oh, saw. Yeah, it's right, when right. he was using chopsticks. She's chopsticks. She's like, didn't you notice that he stopped using them halfway yeah, through? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. There was a whole thing like people meeting. Yeah. But yeah. that's yeah. our fault. So just to listener for context. <laughs> it's that not know the movie's that, fault. That we fault. missed <laughs> some of this film. Um, so the idea then is uh, Mako Mako is going to train much like Take Mr. One. Miyagi. 
He's yeah. going to train uh, young Brandis in the 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 martial arts, yes. and so thus begins the training sequences. Yes, of this film sequences. Mm-hmm. Yes, sequences because yes. and this is where I was like, okay, many. because Chuck Norris is a, is an executive producer. Like he's making a movie. He's like, we're if we're gonna do a movie that eventually, you know, it's about karate, mm-hmm. karate, not karate, not karate, karate. Uh, that we're gonna make like the the m- most complete, best karate movie that we can. Mm-hmm. We're gonna show every single step of the way and all the you know uh, uh, exercises that a person's gonna do. Mm-hmm. Yep. I ask you, was that entertaining to watch? All of it. And no. How many, how many <laughs> minutes yeah. of the runtime do you think were dedicated to exercise video? Basically, mm. a musical montage set the to same music. the same music from <laughs> Alan Silvestri in possibly one of the worst scores that he's ever done <laughs> oh, in yeah. his life. It's that same music for, mm-hmm. you know, how much, like half an I hour? Know, like 30 minutes, yeah. yeah. I wanted to scream edit, fucking edit with the um, the rope climbing scene in gym class. Yes. Holy shit. Wow, we yes. we all we all went through PE. We don't need to relive it again through this movie and a scene that means nothing. No, what did he? I mean, because eventually I got the idea that like I mean, because I was actually thinking, and I think maybe the movie is going here that like because it's so light on antagonists, the main antagonist is uh him, him himself, and yes. that he has to prove something. To himself. And yes. so, like, this movie is really trying to hammer that home by not giving you, really, throughout the film, a main antagonist to root against. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of, like, throw one in that, you you know, you've seen the guy before, but, like, by the mm-hmm. end of the movie, it becomes, like, this is a challenge that it's you and him. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's really, you know, he's got to prove something to himself. It's sure. true. <sighs> You're right about that, Colin. Well, I know that the <laughs> conflicts are what? Man versus nature, man versus man, and man versus himself. That's right. And this movie has at least two of those. So mm-hmm. kudos to the movie <laughs> side and, and, and the writer. <laughs> <laughs> That's more accurate. Yeah. There's one and a half. It, shoe, it shoehorns in that half later on. Be like, oh, yeah, we should probably have him actually fight someone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least if, uh, you know, there's like the old man in the sea, at some point they give him a fish that he's got to, you know, that externalizes uh, his mm-hmm. uh his conflict right yeah okay so the uh the climax of this movie l- last act yes the last is, half of right, the last right. act Which is like, yeah <laughs> it's like okay we are going to have a tournament where uh the kids are you know because he's going to compete against this other dojo mm-hmm. which you do in a karate movie which yeah right this is a little different right, yeah. because it's a it's a floor routine. Well, well, no, there's a whole. They have to have a team, mm-hmm. but it like encompasses like many different levels. Like this is not just straight fighting. Yeah, which is what we want. It's actually like no, no, no. At a karate exhibition, there's all these there's different many different things, ones. and we're going to show each. And one you know, of them God, and you know, goddamn well that's because Chuck Norris was the fucking executive producer. Right. He was like, "This is how it actually is. This is how we're going to do." It. That's what right. it feels like. Yes. It really does feel. Yes. like that. I'm here to say. I'm kind of okay with that because we got Karate Kid, which is all about the fighting and everything. I'm kind of okay with like showing the other different parts of like these tournaments that go on. I was kind of okay with it. Too. I like the the brick yeah. breaking and everything. Like it doesn't come down between a fight between Jonathan Brandis and the other guy. I kind of like that it comes down to this. Is it less action packed and everything when it gets to it? Yeah, probably. Because sure. It's, 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 but you but don't I have like any narrative but forward propulsion. It, exactly. it, it, it didn't have it's it's like, like yeah. throughout the rest yeah. of the movie but previous. So. <laughs> which is its problem. <laughs> well, which is the problem. Well, we've gone yes. an hour and a half an to hour this and a half without this is like having three it hours to, in to give, yeah. it, to but, give it that at any point later like, on. All right, let's just keep going with the brick breaking. I'm fine with that. But like the cool. first, the first third of the tournament is no contact anything. It's all yeah. those people fucking it's, kicking it's, to it's music. They're and, yeah. kicking they're doing to their performances. Pose. They're, yeah. Like it's right. gymnastics floor routines. Right. They're it performing is. it to music. Which again, like, I'm, I'm sure this is very realistic to what actually goes on. Oh, yeah. But it's not interesting to watch in a movie. Sure, I get that. But I'm all. But like if we're going. They decided to go that way. Like I'm just the, like, I have, that's cool. I have that's much fine. less issue, issue with the brick breaking than I do with the fucking floor routines. Like, that's sure. where I'm, I'm well, brick breaking's fine. Whatever. But here's but. the, the thing. Like, your movie has, you have a protagonist 
and an end. Exactly. And and a film. And it's so, so basic. This it's is not. Like, it's not hard. But it's not. It's. I mean, these scenes that we're talking about don't even involve Jonathan Brandis. They're like in his teacher, nope. who is also a karate expert, gets in and gets to do some stuff. His uh, mentor gets to go in there and do some stuff, and then they because you need four people on the team. Who just happens to be at this exhibition? All right, it's a karate Norris. exhibition in Texas. <laughs> Chuck Norris is at every one of those. The real yes. Chuck Norris mm-hmm. is there. Charles so, Norris is there. And he agrees through like a contrivance to be on their team because he's got to be. Because he's the, he uh, is Joe the Piscopo. greatest person in the world. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. And I think yeah. that's it. He is the I, nicest person. He's just a Mr. Yeah. Altruism. Ever. That's yeah. the yes. most dangerous thing about this movie is it encourages kids to meet their heroes. And that's right. a major problem. <laughs> that's true. Because no one, that you're never going to live up to it they you're, don't you're never gonna meet <laughs> a celebrity don't. as nice as chuck norris in this no. movie no never that's the thing. never like they're really making him out to be the nicest guy in the world well, yeah. yeah because this is a fantasy for eight-year-old children yes, yes. And instead of, <laughs> exactly. i'm saying it's a dangerous precedent to set for eight-year-old children to think if they meet their heroes they're gonna pl- fight with you in a karate then tournament you yeah. get those life lessons where your heart gets broken and you're like but oh, it would be much less suck. of a heartbreak if you didn't set the bar <laughs> so fucking high <laughs> i uh, need the heartbreak <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're a better person now. Life's gonna uh, hand you enough heartbreak on its own <laughs> without setting up false hopes. There are people in this world who did not get enough heartbreak. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. That's true. So, you know. Possibly Chuck Norris himself, who's apparently just a ray of uh, That man light. earned everything he got. You shut up about Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> he, he talks about it in the movie. He worked for it, man. Yeah. All right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, shut your whore mouth. <laughs> He's got a lot of platitudes, uh, Mr. Chuck Norris. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And uh, odes of wisdom, but I mean, a lot of those are because he's a you know a, a hallucination. I think for most of it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. There's still an argument to be made that he's a hallucination for all of it. <laughs> I think. Yeah, it would make more sense. It would it make would more be, sense if he was a hallucination. Great. The whole movie. There's no way he's not. That, there's no way he's that nice. There's just no way he's that nice. I just can't. I guess I can't reconcile these who's. I was try. I was going with it because at the end yeah. there is a scene. Oh yeah, where he meets like after the tournament, right. and and that's the other thing. Okay, uh, <laughs> but anyway, he's on a bench with Jonathan Brandis, and uh, he uh, Brandis like gets up and turns around, and nobody's there. And it's like it's not was a, he it's ever not, it's, there? It's not just that nobody's there. We hear. <laughs> Like you're and the wind, like there. he like he blew right. away. Yeah. Like, or he like did five flips and then it was gone. <laughs> I thought I he like Avengers dissolved away. Right. Is what yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. happened. Yeah, he's Chuck fucking Norris. He, he's he like, turned into the wind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he's gone. Yeah. Um. But the other point that I was just thinking of is like, mm-hmm. there's no dramatic. Like the whole outcome of this movie is a foregone conclusion. Yeah. You know why Rocky worked, or dare I say, the Karate Kid? Yeah. Because you didn't know. That Daniel was going to, I mean, like, you know, we're talking about, like, you know, in the movies, usually they have happy endings. Sure. But in that moment, you're like, you know, you feel that the guy's outmatched. You feel like, Mm -hmm. you know, this could go either way. He got his ass kicked at the end of Karate Kid. Yeah. Yeah. He was almost lucky that he won that tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. It's the last moment. Yeah. It's the last moment. Because his foot's broken and all these disadvantages. But in this movie, it's like. And then you're right. They don't even fight, right? There's not even a fist fight. It's basically mm-hmm. like, nope. this I, guy's going to break, break more inanimate breaks. objects than you did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And they were on fire. So by I one. So I win. <laughs> by one, right? <laughs> by one. Yeah. By yeah, one. By one. Also yeah. It's a pretty fire. thin margin, so. Yeah, but he had to have his chi in line in order to do this. And that means the other guy, his That's chi That's so satisfying. Of, of oh, look, his, look, his chi. <laughs> his chi is in line. <laughs> this is satisfying. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> yeah, they don't even mention this in the movie. They should have. No. I mean, that's like, yeah. hey, wait, no, 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 that's why I can do it. I can, I can break breaks all day long. Nine of them. Doesn't matter. Put ten. On fire? Yeah, I'm good. Fire helps. It softens. Yeah, why does, does the, the fire, fire help? help? It softens the bricks. See, I was actually thinking, I'm like, <laughs> is there some kind of, because you're basically, you light it on fire that, you know, it's like the molecules are changing. <laughs> right, <No>. exactly. <laughs> so they right. would be more apt to break because they're say, moving around. This is the thought that eight-year-old Sean had and has continued to have for the next 24 years. <laughs> Just light it on that fire. It, it softens the bricks. Yeah. That is the thought I had then. I would think it, it makes them more on. brittle. I, I don't know if it would do it that quickly. I want to say yeah. weak. I think it's just burning off the fluid that he put on there. Probably. Yeah. Oh, I mean. Oh, so why do you light it on fire? Just for show. Cool. To, for to show. Make him focus. 
It wasn't. <laughs> Colin is speechless right now. <laughs> like we said, if you just light on fire, it becomes That's more right. important. It's going to make me focus. Now, not only do I have to, you know, like bring my energy down and break nine bricks. I'm going to do it quick so I don't not die. Get burned. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they always show them, and it's funny when he actually does it. They punch right through the bricks, and your arm. You know, the puncher's arm goes down and gets almost like caught because the bricks cave in. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you are going down Your face arm would first be scraped into hell. the yeah. flames. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he says it stings. <laughs> he does. He does say that. <laughs> <laughs> he went. So he went. <laughs> so he wins. <laughs> he showed them. He breaks the fire oh, bricks and he wins. But we do get he didn't a kick anyone's ass. He didn't get in a fight. He just but broke we some did bricks get a mano won. and mano fight with uh, Joe Piscopo and Chuck Norris, sure. which yeah. is what the movie was building to the whole time. I guess. Yeah. So. It was, I mean, it was it, fine. It was. I don't know if it was building to it, but yeah. Because right, again, it's just like okay. <laughs> the two guys who are the adults in the movie. Yeah, it was. Gonna, it was. There was a. Brief moment at the beginning where Joe Piscopo mentions that he could beat up Chuck Norris, and then at the end they have a little meet and greet. That's about all of it. Yeah. I was <laughs> expecting it. Joe Piscopo to bust out some dirty moves, you know, like he some did a illegal kind of stuff, and like that was how he'd get the upper hand, yeah. especially because he's like, I can kick his ass. That's why he doesn't come to these anymore. And then it's like, kind of. Right. Held back, it felt like right. a little crowd had, of kid moves in there. Yeah, was just he had like, a couple yeah. cheap shots. Yeah, he did that because yeah. it was a, the handshake or whatever. And he yeah. boxed him in the face. Mm-hmm. Ooh, he, he did one, out. and then he got his ass whooped through for the next five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it was exciting. And all it was was just <laughs> like this is an opportunity for Joe Piscopo to make faces. Yeah. Which, of, ooh, you know, which, I mean, I'm okay with. Yeah, sure. I mean, what, what, what more can you gonna, ask of him? I mean, gonna, right? If he's going to be in it, that's what he needs to do. Sure. Because the way he gets beat in this movie was that the one? No, that wasn't the one where he got kicked in the balls and like launched himself into the air. Was that no? That, that was one of the bikers in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Yeah. The yeah. bikers yeah. in the restaurant. Another it's place where it important. seems like we were missing a scene. Yeah. yeah. Because right. in our copy, like... Uh, they just showed up. They were just there all the time. That's a scene that got cut to hell, yeah. it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, now there's bikers ter- tormenting poor Bo Bridges. Who's not, he's a computer programmer. These yeah. bikers. <laughs> and they're like in this Asian restaurant. With bottles and, of alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Just out of the blue. And it requires uh, the uncle character to come in and save the day and demonstrate right. his amazing martial arts uh, mastery. Mm-hmm. Basically hitting people with a tray. Yeah, sure. but you have to in the movie pouring I hot think, liquids on him. Yeah, you have to somehow like Mr. Miyagi saving Daniel from the bullies. You mm-hmm. have to, you know, say like, well, if we're going to spend the rest of this movie with this character, or our hero is going to be with this character, we have to establish early that he's the goods, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That he knows yeah. what he's doing. Yeah, and you stick with him. Kick someone's ass. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, we're jumping around. No, well, we're no, talking no, about Joe Piscopo making faces at the yeah. end when he got. Uh, so what happened? He like didn't he get flipped in the air or something? There was some like kind five of like times. cuckoo yeah. noises and stuff like that happening. And Joe Piscopo eyes bugging out of his head and graphic close up. Yeah, it was you know a little yeah, kid in the face flipped slightly, around like slightly Looney Tunes ish. <laughs> Very Looney Tunes ish. <laughs> Appealing to the eight year old in the yep. audience. Yep. Then he lands with a thud on the. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> a riveting, riveting piece of cinema. <laughs> Drama, very high. On the- I really want to talk about the like last shot of this movie, like the it. final scene. Yeah. No, please. It's, there's please a do. lot to unpack in this scene. Please do. So uh, after after Chuck Norris blows away with the wind and leaves the, the cur- taped up karate. <laughs> he really does. He yeah. goes with the wind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this he, is good. He leaves the taped up black belt magazine on the bench where, where him and Jonathan <laughs> Brandis were sitting. We see this... Del- like delighted kid yeah. come up and pick up the magazine. <laughs> yeah, well, he literally makes that yeah. sound when he picks it up. <laughs> and then we pan out and see that that kid is in a wheelchair. That's right. <laughs> and it's like, what is the in- intent of this? Is the idea, the hope. Anyone can that- be Chuck Norris, right. I guess. Chuck the sequel, Norris is so the sequel is side dot 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 kicks, question mark. <laughs> Wheelie kicks. Yeah. It's, yeah. Side wheelies. Yeah. I want to see that sequel <laughs> yeah. where that kid becomes a fucking karate master. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just like the fact that, that like you said, that his face is all aglow from seeing, like, mm-hmm. wow. Chuck Norris. If yeah. does he even know who Chuck Norris is? Is he just like in this world? Look he's at like that Jesus. Beard. Right. He's there, so he. Must. I was gonna say he's yeah. outside of the arena. He's outside so of he's, the arena, so yeah. he must know. He's gotta know, yeah. right? He's, he's probably know. he's probably inside at some point. Yeah. 
But like he's losing he's his not taking legs. that for granted. So what else he, would he want so to go he, watch? So is he just like, wow, free magazine? Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Or he's just like, wow. I mean, like the guy. Has he know. never seen a magazine before? Is he I like. Mean, maybe. All that age at some point was like, oh shit, it's free. I don't care what it is. My mom would never buy this for me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so Chuck Norris will go on to inspire uh, subsequent generations. Generations. The idea being the baton has been passed. Brandis no longer needs Chuck Norris because now he's got the girl too. Yeah. Which I like that Winnie is constantly like, well, not throwing herself at him, but she is. I like that you just called her Winnie. Embarrassing. What is that her name? In In the the Wonder Years. Yeah. 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 I know what I'm talking about. No, I just, I appreciate that you. Danica. Yeah, Danica. The mask She's Winnie. She's Winnie. What else? What else? She's Winnie Cooper. I know. I'm on board. I'm just Uh, saying. I like it. (laughs) What was her name in this movie? I don't know. Lauren. Okay. That's what she had this peg before. I see. I don't know that you're right. I'm going to take her sure you word for it. But yeah, probably. No. So, uh, yeah, because she's embarrassing herself in order to protect, uh, stand up for uh, Brandis. You can do it, Barry. In all these times that he's being bullied and whatever. Why don't you just leave him alone? And like all this other stuff where I'm like, you know, do people stick their necks out? Well, isn't that like awe inspiring and, you know, hopeful that mm-hmm. people will do that? Um, but then the movie's message, it's kind of weird. Because he asks her out. Mm-hmm. He'll be like, you like me, I like you. Mm-hmm. Very weird. And uh, she turns him down. She does. She does. She's like, I like you, Barry, but not that way. Mm-hmm. It's perfectly fine. However. Now that you know a karate. A couple right. minutes later. I like you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A couple her, minutes later. Her priorities are questionable. Right. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh shit. You work yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Shit. Or you hung out with Chuck Norris yep. might be it too. The Chuck Norris vibes, but it's, like, but it's, before, like that, before it's before that. It's before that. Yeah. She she's but, like, oh, I, I want to go to the zoo with you. Yeah, he's not a helpless little that. dude. That's like, the thing, though. Like, I'm not I'm not defending this at all because I think it is fucked up. I'm just saying the confidence is a good thing. Sure, mm-hmm. that's what it's, it's saying. A boost. Yeah. It's she's, a boost. I think she's attracted. I'm just to saying, confidence. like, yeah. It's like, oh, let's be real. Himself. Yeah, he's he's actually trying. He's confident. Like. That's right. a big there is, factor. Right. There is a difference yes. between one and the other. There yes. really is. Yeah. Just saying. That happens, and it ends uh, it beautifully yeah. with uh, her kissing him and her leg going up. I mean, confidence uh, killing. <laughs> I, do, yeah. so I do. I do like the. I do like the consistency that they had said earlier on that the more self control he has and the more he controls his hallucinations the less he's going to need them. And they do stick with that throughout the movie because later on, like they become less and less at the beginning. It's like, that's all that's we had all was, was is, hallucinations yes. towards the end. Like we didn't have many, like if, I did like that consistency. If there, yeah. If there's any yeah. consistency in this movie, it's that. Yeah. I, and maybe only that, that might, that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to stick with some kind of, uh, you know, the plan. On- I mean, you know, yeah, there it is. Uh, sidekicks. At sidekicks. Yeah, okay, so well, <laughs> you're, you know, we're not the listener, so we want you to stick around because right now I know that you have no idea how we actually thought about this movie. We're not telegraphing anything at all, but we're going to go around the room and we're yeah. going to tell you individually yeah, I don't know how Michaela's going to come down on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really at a loss. Yeah, this is, but this is the most exciting part because you have no idea. I mean, like it sounds one way, and it could go a completely different way from you don't know who. Because yeah. Sean like possession. Yeah, he sure, did. Sure. I know. Hey. No, we've had some surprises on yep. the show. Yeah. No. Okay. Liked possession. <laughs> recommended. You recommended Reco- it. I recommended possession. Yeah. And why you were would you right not, to do so. If why you would you didn't like it? Why would you recommend like? it? You obviously like it. You recommended that, uh, it. None, 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 but, 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 you but, think but, other people should watch? You know what? No, yes. I do. You know what? <laughs> that doesn't mean I necessarily. I cannot like it. talk about possession one more goddamn time on <laughs> <in> the <this> show. <laughs> all right. So first of all, what we're going to do before we get to that exciting uh, portion of the uh, program. We're going to read some of your mail, and to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. He's got his mullet all greased up today. Does he have his extensions in? Yeah, I think so. Does he have the Hitman extensions? Hitman extensions. Wow, thank you, Igor. He didn't find his trench coat in time, though. That's unfortunate. Well, it's because he's wearing his gi. (laughs) (laughs) Gi. So, about our movie Sidekicks, uh, we were asking 
uh, kind of facetiously, like it's sidekicks. And by we, Colin means Colin. Yep. Colin was asking. Colin's facetiously. the facetious one on this yeah. podcast. So then, is uh, Sidekicks a freak show movie? And Chris Rudicus writes in and says it's absolutely worthy of being on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, uh, for all you who missed it, Holly just threw up the horns. No, for that. I did. <laughs> rock on. She's like, rock on. <laughs> Uh, Gary Lee writes in and he says, this is not the first Chuck Norris movie I'd go to. That's fair. But I believe his, <laughs> I believe his oh. entire filmography is worthy of getting shit on by a quality <laughs> podcast. Also fair. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. Yeah. Uh, Grant Parrish writes in and says, I freaking loved sidekicks growing up. There you go. That's it. There you go. He That's says, a complete sentence. Well, yeah. he also says yeah, yeah. maybe sort of he had a thing for Mr. Brandis. So this and Ladybugs and Never Ending Story 2 were frequent rentals. I mean, there you go. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Same childhood. Got it. <laughs> Novato Judoka says, uh, I will always have the memory of walking down to the Scholastic Book Fair in grade school, buying a karate book, and then spending the night reading it while watching Sidekicks in my room that night. I think we all did that. Yeah. Nothing better you. than a Scholastic Book Fair. One. Uh, he wants to give Holly two picks in a row with white ninjas. Oh, because you did. The oh, Miami connection. connection. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And HP writes in and says that Holly is absolutely right in picking this movie. I grew up watching this and loving it, even though I knew at a young age this is a Karate Kid ripoff. The movie has charm and a surprisingly solid cast. I also knew how to climb a rope because of this movie, too. Thank you, Chuck Norris. I will say I did take that away from yeah, this Yeah, I didn't know that. And yeah. I have always known the leg thing because of this movie. Yeah, I've never climbed a rope, but it's always been a monogamous. It's always been. Always and been and a it's monogamous. From this movie. <laughs> yeah. The God Shirt Twins writes in and says oh. if uh, Sidekicks will get Richard Mall that much closer to being on the wall, <laughs> then He's it's worth close. it. Uh, oh, I love that. I love people following our wall. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did not Somewhere read that Somewhere out there, Bravo. there is a wall. Somebody has made up. I Mm -hmm. can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, About our movie Angel, uh, Grant Parrish writes in again. He says, uh, about the killer in Angel, he's going deep dive, this psychology. He says, nobody asks to be alive, and yet we don't want to die. We rebel by punishing the symbol of female fertility while cursing the woman who damned you to this paradoxical existence. Angel is hella deep. That is deep. That is really deep. Knock that shit off. Wait, is that from the movie? No. No, he's talking about when he's, he's, he's sucking the egg. Yeah. That's what he's talking and about. Kissing his mom. Yeah. It's a picture. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what oh, he's talking about. That's, that, that is deep. deep. That is very deep. Uh, <laughs> fuck. All right. I need to borrow Angel's <laughs> Uh Sean Rogers said that uh, Susan Tyrell had his favorite line in the movie, which I will not which repeat we can't here. Repeat. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Different time. She did have great, we're not great gonna, moments, though. Yeah, we're not going to say it. No. Just watch the movie. Yeah, yeah. watch the movie. Uh, Gary Norris says he owns this one and still loves it. Hmm. Uh, Christian Steele said, after hearing your episode, I had to do the triple feature with the fourth. The fourth Angel movie is disqualified due to it being in the 90s. He bought the uh, the triple feature. Nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo. And uh, B Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, although by the sound of your podcast, Angel is Vice Squad after going through a full service car wash, because Vice Squad is seriously <laughs> goddamn sleazy and Wings Hauser plays psychotic a little too well. That's my Vice favorite squad. analogy ever. <laughs> going through a full service car wash. I'm going to start using that. I like That's that. That's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you all for writing in. Thank you. We appreciate Fantastic. it. Fantastic. I love it. Um, so this is the moment that you've been waiting for. What mm. do what did we think of sidekicks? We're gonna go around the room. We're gonna start with Colin. Oh. Somber. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to go in for the the jazz radio voice yourself? Right. I, that wasn't it, try it again. Colin. I don't know. <laughs> uh Colin okay. is not impressed. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> it's only because you are a uh a very short syllabled name. That's true. So I can't uh, draw Colin. Over. You can't do it like that. Colin. Yeah, I go. mean, that was more breathy. Yeah. I liked it. Here we go I to Colin. Colin. Colin on the right. one. Colin. Hey, <laughs> it's a psyching me up. I almost would <laughs> say something positive about sidekicks. <laughs> all right. Colin. <laughs> Colin, what did you think about sidekicks? All right. Let, no, let's get straight here. All right. Yeah, okay. I don't want to fool you. Into, what did you think about sidekicks? <laughs> That's more like there it. There you go. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess. Um, no, don't just go for it. I would, Let him talk, Sean. You know okay. how you feel. I Let know. him talk. But I, there is a specific subset of people for whom I would recommend this movie, and that is people who are into uh, 
karate. I think like that, you know, if you're a, a, a seriously, you know, this is what my problem with the movie was. I was sitting there watching it and I'm like, the karate kid is a movie that kind of made me interested in karate. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rocky made me interested in boxing. This is all about karate kind of right. I mean, it's more intensely about karate. And it was like so nuts and bolts. And I'm like, this is like inside baseball. This only matters to the people who are taking these classes and go like, yep, this is exactly right. Oh, they actually did that the way, you know, I didn't care mm-hmm. about the karate. I didn't care about the characters because I think Jonathan Brandis is not a very good actor. Uh, and his character is like always, you know, I mean, he did come off as uh, as delusional, <laughs> you know, I mean, to, yeah. as an adult yeah. watching it. Mentally ill. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you read it. I grant you that like an eight year old kid would probably really enjoy this movie. But I mean, if you're over the age of eight. I mean, even if you're a Chuck Norris fan, right? If you're do a Chuck you, Norris fan, you've seen all. Colin, do you know how scenes. old I was in 1993? I'm going to go with six, eight, eight, eight years old. <laughs> why, why did you just not guess eight? Because yeah. I'm, you know, uh, the uh, I guess I don't know. I, I can't. That's why it's like, yeah. Can you recommend this to people? You can show it to your eight year old kid, but for the rest of you. This is like one of the, I mean, I'm going to say it was one of the worst experiences that I ever, I mean, it was so long. It was so boring. I was so disengaged. I just wanted it to be over. Every time that fucking training montage music started up, I wanted, I was actually like, can I get up and pretend that I have to go get something from upstairs or something like that? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, he didn't leave the room. I didn't I'll leave the room for that. Uh, but I wanted to desperately for all whatever how many hours this thing ran. Uh, I would not not wish sidekicks on anyone else other than an eight year old. I'm walking that back. Can, uh, Michaela, take 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 this away. <laughs> all right. Uh, I know, this is my first time watching this. I never saw it uh, <laughs> ever right, you before. Guys didn't grow up with this? No, no, didn't grow up with this movie. Um, grew up watching the Karate Kid a lot. Loved that. That I just I think if you have the nostalgic attachment for this movie, definitely revisit it because I think you'll still love it. But if you don't, I don't really see a reason to watch it. Um, yeah, I just don't see a reason to watch it if you, if it, you didn't grow up with it. And there's a lot of movies in the '90s like that, especially movies geared towards kids. Um, I mean, Holly and I talk off mic all the time about movies that we love that we know are terrible that mm-hmm. we would probably never tell other people to Absolutely. watch. But we love them because, you know, you, you watch them at a time in your life and that's the time yep. you visit every time you watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, it has no plot, like, at all. Like, it really, like, meanders and just kind of... And there are talented people involved in this movie and it just... It seems pretty big budget. It just seems like a real quick cash in on a on a Karate Kid thing, which is weird because it was so much later. Right. So yes. um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I didn't hate it, but it did feel really long. And like I said, I just have no attachment to it. So I wouldn't recommend it just because I just have no reason to recommend it. So, Sean. Um, I used to watch this movie a lot. A lot. Mm-hmm. When I was younger. Yeah. So much. Um, and watching it, and it, but it had been 20 years since I've seen this movie, <laughs> but watching it tonight, like I was transported back to being, yeah. uh, eight to 10 years old watching this and some of the, and, and, and just some of the scenes come back to me. Um, there's a lot of Richard Mole stuff in this, or I'm just like, I remember that. And I still think about there's certain things. I still think about it, not knowing it came from this movie. Yeah. Yeah. When, when Jonathan Brandis gets hit in the head with the ball and it's Richard Mole going, wake up. Yeah. I still think about that in weird situations. Um, so I, this movie still like sticks with me, even if I don't know it sticks with me. Yeah. It's weird. But, uh, I think you guys had it exactly right. If you didn't grow up with this movie, it's fucking garbage mm-hmm. and you sh- and you should not watch it yes. whatsoever <laughs> like do not come to this as a first time viewer because again it feels longer than it is um it's it's an odd movie mm-hmm. as we discussed before um the only recommendation i can make is like yeah show it to your 8 year old and that's that's where this movie lives that's the only way it exists because you shouldn't revisit it as an adult, I don't think, and uh, you shouldn't come to it as a new viewer. But 
Uh, I'll show it to my kid, but I'll be out of the room while he's watching. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's the recommendation I can make. I'll be reading a book or something while he watches this movie. So uh, um, I think I think that's it for for sidekicks. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's my thoughts on it, Holly. Yeah, no, you guys are are completely right. If you did not grow up with this movie, you should not watch this movie. Absolutely. The only reason I love this movie is pure nostalgia, mm. pure nostalgia, and I'm very aware of that. Um, it's awful. This movie's terrible. And I like that. I don't care. I just don't give a fuck. I like it. Um, so many memories grow- growing up watching this movie. Um, my my brother and I watched it constantly. I th- I think we still like talk about parts, and we still I don't I can't even think of what we would quote, but I feel like we quote it. And I I don't know. This movie just sticks, like you said, it sticks with you in a really weird, bizarre weird way. Weird way. Really bizarre way. Would I recommend it to anyone? If you watched it as a kid, yes, I recommend you revisit because you'll get some nostalgia. Nobody else should watch this movie. Not one person. It's terrible. It is absolutely terrible. I can't even express that I love a good 90s montage. I love it. Do you like 50 of them? I don't like 45 minutes of the same music, the same shit over and over again. It's repetitive and ridiculous. There's no plot. This movie is so many pull-ups. So many, so, so many. many if you did not grow up with it, it is unwatchable. So I have to officially not recommend it. Oh no! <laughs> oh wow! But if you grew that up happens. with it, obviously mm-hmm. I do recommend you check it out again because you'll get those feels. That's well, a, yeah, or will I it mean, ruin you will, your childhood? No, because I've rewatched it, and I'm just I get the but I get that, those like, memories. But you were like psychoanalyzing the shit out of this I movie was, in a way that you've like, seen it so many times. Yeah, yeah. like you're gonna ruin it for yourself. The, because this is <laughs> I I watched it a lot as a kid. I've seen it twice as an adult in the past, like this tonight, and then like two months ago. I just took a lot from it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to tell you. Well. Right. Well, mm-hmm. sidekicks uh, is a lot to dive into. <laughs> that's true. It is. It's oh, a no. very deep, deep film. Um, <laughs> and now we've uh, moved closer to putting Chuck Norris on the wall. <laughs> yeah, by that's one right. movie. Um, so It'll probably be a while before the next one. Yeah, God yeah. willing, <laughs> absolutely. Sorry, Chuck. So Here's next your week, daughter, Chuck. we're gonna be <laughs> what? <laughs> Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, so next week we're gonna be watching a movie that's chosen by Michaela. Kayla, what are we watching next week? We're going to watch a movie that most people have either not seen or have forgotten entirely. Mm. We're going to watch Bad Moon from 1996. What oh, the fuck is that? Exactly. What does it sound like? What kind of movie does it sound werewolf like? Werewolf movie. Exactly. Yeah, what kind of movie would I pick movie. called Bad Moon? Werewolf movie. Yes. <laughs> all right. Was this the unrated Scream Factory We're going to watch version? the unrated version, yes. Ooh, all right. Love it. Mm-hmm. Bad Moon. <laughs> All right, so that's next week, Bad Moon on the Saturday Night Freak Show, ladies and germs. And until then, the basement is going dark.